Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Eric from eGetSec. We all know how powerful the Snapdragon 888 is, but for those who still own an older flagship phone from 2020 or even from 2019, is it really worth it to upgrade to the Snapdragon 888 if you already have a phone like the ROG Phone 3 or even the older Red Magic 3S? So what I'm going to try to do in this video is show you guys the performance difference from a flagship phone from one year ago and even flagship phones from two years ago. And if you've noticed guys, I've got the Poco F3 in this lineup. We all know that this isn't a flagship phone, it's more of a mid-range phone, but it does have the Snapdragon 870. So we're going to find out if a mid-range phone released this year can actually beat gaming phones released last year. So what are we waiting for guys? Let's get this performance benchmark started. Before we begin the test, I've got 6 phones here, they're all the Snapdragon 800 series. Starting from the left, I've got the OnePlus 7 Pro, the Nubia Red Magic 3S, the Nubia Red Magic 5G, Asus ROG Phone 3, the Poco F3, and Nubia Red Magic 6 Pro. So the OnePlus 7 Pro has the Snapdragon 855, the 3S has the 855 Plus, the Snapdragon 865 on the 5G, 865 Plus on the ROG Phone 3, and of course, Snapdragon 870 on the Poco F3 and the Snapdragon 888 on the Red Magic 6 Pro. Now in terms of RAM and storage, the OnePlus 7 Pro has 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage while the Red Magic 3S has 12 to 56 as well as the Red Magic 5G. And the phone with the smallest RAM is actually the Poco F3. I only managed to get my hands on the 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage version. Now in terms of refresh rate, the two phones on the left that I've got here, the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Red Magic 3S have a 90Hz display while the Red Magic 5G and the ROG Phone 3 both have 144Hz, the Poco F3 has 120Hz, and the highest refresh rate among the 6 is the Red Magic 6 Pro with 165Hz. So for the test that I'm going to be doing, of course, I'm going to be including Antutu Benchmark version 9, then I'm going to run Geekbench 5, and of course, I'm going to run 3 Mark, and I'm going to be running one quick stress test, that is the 3 Mark Wildlife Stress Test, to see which of these Snapdragon chips actually throttle the most. And of course, I'm going to be running each of these phones in their own dedicated game mode. So of course, you've got the Nubia Game Center on the 3 Nubia phones, I'm going to be turning on X mode on the Asus ROG Phone 3, and I'm going to be adding Antutu, of course, to the game space on the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Poco F3. So hang on guys, let me load up and do it real quick. Alright guys, just to keep things fair, I've also elevated all the phones because the Red Magic 3S actually has the fan at the bottom here. So if I'm going to lay it flat on its back, then that fan is going to get blocked. So let me load up all and do the benchmarks. So for the OnePlus 7 Pro, I'm in game space and I'm going to be launching and do the benchmark. Alright guys, so let's start the first Antutu benchmark test and they're all on version 9.08. Let's start it now. Alright guys, so the first and to the test is done. Of course, the Snapdragon 888 is the big winner with 842,359. Temperature went up as high as 35.5. While in second place, we've got the Asus ROG Phone 3 with 724,334. Followed by the Red Magic 5G at 678,365. Close behind the Snapdragon 865 is the Snapdragon 870 with 675,822. The Snapdragon 855 Plus is in 5th place, 586,416 and of course the lowest score is the Snapdragon 855 with 515,632. So if you notice here guys, so temperature wise they're all around 33 to 35 degrees Celsius so not too bad guys. So I'll let the phones cool down and then I'll start my Geekbench 5 score and let's see how well those flagship phones from 2 years ago actually fare in that test. Alright guys, so Geekbench 5 score is done. It's pretty interesting here is that the Snapdragon 850 series scored a single core score of 697 on the OnePlus 7 Pro, 610 on the 855 Plus, and almost the same multi-core score with 2482 and 2351 on the Red Magic 3S. Now starting from the Snapdragon 865, 
The scores are pretty close to each other because on the Snapdragon 865, it's 908, 987 on the 865 Plus, and this is pretty surprising. The Snapdragon 870, which is the cheapest phone among the bunch, scored the highest single core score with 996. The Snapdragon 888 scored only 970. But with the Snapdragon 888, it won the multi-core score with 3478. 3393 on the Poco F3, 3383 on the ROG Phone 3, and on the Red Magic 5G with the Snapdragon 865. So it does look like that the Poco F3 is putting up quite a fight here, guys. So one last test to go and that is the 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test. So I'll let the phone cool down and we'll start that test. Alright guys, so the final test of the day is 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test. So I'm going to find out in this 20 minute test and see whether any of the Snapdragon 8 series will dial down its performance due to heat. We all know how hot the Snapdragon 888 gets, but how well will the Snapdragon 870, 865 Plus, 865, 855 Plus and the Snapdragon 855 compare with the latest and greatest from Qualcomm. So let's start this 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test in 3, 2, 1. Alright guys, so test is done. Of course, the winner will be the Red Magic 6 Pro with a score of 5723. Stability is pretty good at 99.1% and the highest temperature that it got is 49 degrees Celsius with a frame rate between 24 to 41. The Snapdragon 870 on the Poco F3 didn't do too bad, it scored 4,284, so it actually beat out the Snapdragon 865 Plus and the Snapdragon 865, though the lowest loop score is 3,512. It has a stability of 82%, so not as good as the stability on ROG Phone 3 and the Red Magic 5G. Both of these phones have 99.4% of stability. So moving down, so in terms of temperature, it reached 43 degrees and frame rate was between 14 to 32, 18 to 30 on the ROG Phone 3 and 16 to 28 on the Red Magic 5G. Temperature on the ROG Phone 3 was 40 degrees and 41 degrees on the Red Magic 5G. Now surprisingly, the phone that scored the lowest was the Red Magic 3S with only a score of 2401, though the stability is not too bad at 97.4. The OnePlus 7 Pro though scored 3064 and stability is 99.4. So overall, stability is pretty good on some of these phones. So in terms of temperature, they both reach 44 degrees and frame rates were from 11 to 24, 3 to 23 on the Red Magic 3S. The scores are probably low because this is running Android 10 and this 3D Mark test isn't fully supported on Android 10. Alright guys, so the three tests are done and these are the results. And what's surprising here guys is that in terms of CPU score, the Snapdragon 888 does score higher but not by a huge margin. So the Snapdragon 870, 865 Plus, and 865 can still go toe to toe with the Snapdragon 888 in terms of CPU. But the one thing that the Snapdragon 888 has over the older models is that it has a vastly more powerful GPU. And this is evident in this score, where its score actually went up higher than 300,000. All the rest of the Snapdragon 860 phones, they scored only around the 240,000 mark. And of course the Snapdragon 855 on the OnePlus 7 Pro is showing its age. It only managed to score around 171,176. 
Now, in terms of Geekbench 5 scores, this is also pretty interesting. There's not much of a difference between these four phones. So if you get a flagship phone from 2020, then it should still be a pretty powerful phone and should be able to run any of the latest games right now. Pretty surprising that there's not much of a score difference between the Snapdragon 888 and phones from last year. And the Snapdragon 870 on the Poco F3 is also really doing really well. So for the price that you pay to get this phone, and it can actually outscore even the Snapdragon 865 Plus on the ROG Phone 3 in terms of CPU. And now moving on to the 3D Mark Wildlife stress test scores. So the best loop score is of course on the Red Magic 6 Pro with the Snapdragon 888. Because this test actually measures CPU and GPU, and we all know how powerful the GPU is on the Snapdragon 888. The second highest loop score actually goes to the Snapdragon 870. So it is really looking like this Snapdragon 870 on the Poco F3 is a very good value for money. Because this phone is actually half the price of what you're going to pay for any of these flagship games. Phones. The only part that it did pretty bad is on the stability. The Snapdragon 888 on the Red Magic 6 Pro, as well as the other phones, they all scored higher than 96% in terms of stability, while on the Poco F3, it only managed around 82%, which is actually not too bad. So in terms of benchmark guys, I'm pretty impressed with the Poco F3. But of course, benchmarks only tell one side of the story. So let me know in the comments section down below if you want me to do further gaming tests or real world tests with these 6 phones so we can find out whether the Poco F3 is actually worth getting over any of the flagship gaming phones from last year. So with that said, I'll end this video here guys. As usual, a sub would be massively appreciated. Please like and subscribe, hit that bell icon notification, and see you all in my next one.